Hello ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Leo is here. This is another video on asthma. Now, this video is actually inspired by what I'm seeing in urban settlements. Those people who live in apartments, those houses that are actually uh, are built very close to each other. This is also inspired by the cases of asthma that are uh, so prone in children who live along uh, in the in the coastal region along bamburi uh, bamburi mtambo and bamburi uh, kisauni the cases of asthma in children at those areas are super high and i don't know if this is because of the emissions that are coming from that company uh, that nema our only uh, environmentalists have failed to address okay capitalism is a problem however i've noticed that most people will get asthma or will acquire asthma in childhood and as they age, it goes. And they say, oh, you know what? Uh, asthma angu ilipotea and ilipogro. And there are even people who have been told that you, if you are asthmatic, it will just go. Do not worry about it. It will go once you keep on aging. You are confusing that with uh, a, 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 a condition called bronchitis, bronchitis. Okay? There's a condition called bronchitis that actually disappears as you get beyond three, five years there. So it's not asthma. Anyway, asthma is a chronic condition that causes obstruction of the airways so there are three components of asthma one is an overreacting immunity because asthma can actually be autoimmune but as i tackle this i want you to know that asthma is not inherited a very small percentage of asthmatic cases are inherited and this is about two to ten percent of roles in the genes and the gene mutations but the larger percentage 80 to 98 percent of asthma is what you acquire from the environment, you acquire from the diets and all that, the lifestyle basically. So it's nothing to do with the genes. So unlearn that. Number two, asthma is reversible. Now you learn this when you understand these three components. One is an overreacting immune system. Remember this, that is what we call autoimmune. So basically, your own immune system is actually targeting the cells of the bronchioles and the cells of the lungs and causing you a lot of inflammation. And of course, that is number two, inflammation. But let's go back to number one, which is an overreacting immune system. Remember, your immune system relies on the adrenal gland to actually suppress its overreaction. So the adrenal glands produce cortisol. That is a steroid. A steroid that actually suppresses or reminds the immune system, please do not overreact. This is our own, do not target them. This is the reason why we take drugs like steroids like hydrocortisone, dexamethasone, all those, prednisolone that most of you use. Those are drugs that are called steroids. And they actually just support the adrenal function. So you can actually use the drugs to go back and see how the disease actually affects you. So if we have adrenals that are functional and they are producing enough cortisol, we will never have autoimmune conditions, including arthritis. But because our adrenal glands are actually insufficient, they're actually altered, that makes it difficult for us to suppress the overreacting immunity. It also makes it as difficult, uh, it difficult for the system to actually know that this is the invading cell or this is our own cell. So they, they mark. Remember the, the function of this immune system. Immune system works by seeing a mark. There must be a mark on these cells that are invading and no mark on the cells that are ours, our body cells. So if there's a mess in that signaling, of course, the macrophages will come in and clear every cell, including your own cells. So that is one, low cortisol and low uh, adrenal function. But the adrenal function is actually messed up by the uh, use of the same, same steroids. They suppress the adrenal function. Inflammatory foods like the wheat, the seed oils, the sugars, alcohol, they suppress the adrenal function. So that is one. Number two is now inflammation. So from overreacting immune system, you get inflammation. Remember inflammation, the cardinal signs of inflammation, swelling is part of it. Now, you are actually getting these airways inflamed and as they get inflamed, they swell, so they narrow. Once they swell, they narrow and you start struggling with breathing. And also remember, as they are actually getting inflamed, there's production of mucus at this place because the immune cells are being supplied there to actually destroy uh, or handle the inflammation and, the <coughs> and whatever is causing uh, the allergies. So now you have all this mucus being produced and this mucus is actually clogging the, uh, the, the bronchioles even further. So the swelling and the mucus production are coming in handy to actually get uh, you uh, having difficulty in breathing. Okay, therefore the wheezing, the chest tightness are now coming in handy. But number three now is all airway obstruction. So we start with an overreacting immune system. We go to inflammation and then we go to obstruction because of the swelling and the clogging of the bronchioles. 
And now listen, these are basically symptoms of asthma. Once you have those three, you'll have the chest tightness, you'll have the wheezing and difficulty in breathing, you'll have the cough trying to uh, ease up on the mucus, and then you have this shortness of breath and gasping. And you'll see the drugs of choice in asthma are number one, drugs that cause dilation of the bronchioles, the beta 2 agonists like salbutamol, most of you call it ventolin. Other than uh, tabutalin, these are drugs that actually cause dilation of the bronchioles. But realize this, most people who have asthma are always having ventolin in their houses or salbutamol in their houses, those pink tablets. So you're constantly having them in your house and you're taking them every single day. Remember those drugs are, sub are, are for acute asthma. So they are just supposed to be used in acute asthma and for a short period of time, once your bronchioles are open, you let them go. So you take them when necessary. But if you take them on a daily basis and even uh, uh, recurrently, what is going to happen is there is something called receptor desensitization. So a drug acts by binding on a receptor. So when you desensitize that receptor, because you have overused that drug, it will not be sensitive. That's why some of you will use an inhaler, still take the tablets and nothing is happening. You still suffer because you have desensitized your receptors because of overuse of salbutamol. Number two is steroids. And I just told you, the reason why you're taking steroids is because you have an insufficient adrenal. The adrenal is not properly functioning, therefore you need to supplement it with external and synthetic steroids. So if you actually wake up the adrenal, you'll not need to take external steroids because the adrenal will give you natural steroids like cortisol. We have a drug like it's called Montelukast. I know most of you know it. Hmm? You know Montelukast. Uh, there's a drug called hypertropium and these are drugs that are actually uh, for asthma. But I want you to focus your mind on salbutamol and the steroids because those are the drugs that are commonly used and they're the fast lines but however uh, for the steroids excessive consumption of the steroids will cause you a lot of problems it will cause you water retention it will improve your production of glucose in the liver so that is diabetes later on your bones will become very weak you will even suppress the adrenal glands even further so you take a drug that is supposed to actually help you heal from asthma and then at later stages the same same drug actually destroys the organ that is supposed to actually bring you more natural steroids like cortisol. So how will you be able to fight stress later in life? How will you recover from arthritis? How will you even recover from the same same asthma? So these drugs are supposed to be used temporarily as you fix what you need to fix. And I'll tell you what you need to fix because these are the causes of asthma. Number one, in children and even others who have asthma, unfortunately, but this video is for children. So in most of your children who have asthma is because of vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D is a potent and a powerful anti-inflammatory uh, vitamin. Okay, that's why cases of asthma can actually recover by supplementation of vitamin D. About 4,000 to 8,000 units daily can actually improve asthma outcomes. However, you can get vitamin D from diets. You know very well, vitamin D comes from cholesterol. So one of the reasons why we are suffering from this condition is because we, have, we are deficient in cholesterol. We have fatty livers, and you've seen this. Children are very obese nowadays. So they have all these problems with fatty livers. They are unable to synthesize enough cholesterol because a fatty liver, one of the functions of the liver is to synthesize cholesterol. And when you have a fatty liver, you are unable to make enough cholesterol to actually help you in synthesis of vitamin D. Now, if you're eating diets that are rich in animal fats, saturated fats, the eggs, the fish, and all that, you're going to get uh, the ghee, the tlad, tallow, the lard. You're going to get cholesterol from these diets, even the eggs. And when you get that cholesterol, the liver will use that as a raw material to synthesize vitamin D. Because remember, cholesterol is stored under the skin. And then when you get exposure to the sun, which is one of the things that you people do not do. You get exposure to the sun, you activate this cholesterol on your skin to form vitamin D, which is inactive. And then it's carried to the liver for activation and final activation happens in the kidneys. Therefore, you must have your skin in perfect working condition. You must have your liver in perfect working condition. You must have the kidneys of that child in perfect working condition for you to get maximum and optimum amounts of vitamin D. And then you must eat diets that are actually rich in fats and cholesterol to get vitamin D. It's a fat soluble vitamin. has to be diluted. It has to be dissolved in fat before absorption and fat, which is cholesterol is actually a raw material for making this. So on the issue of sunlight, urban settlements have become a scam. You guys have seen, you know, when I was growing up, we used to run all over those, those land, those playing grounds and all that. And kids used to play in the sun and in the rain. But nowadays parents are so cautious. So one, 
they don't allow their children to play outside. <laughs> Number two, these children do not even play on surfaces. Your compounds have surfaces labeled do not step on grass. And they have all these pavements and the cabros. So children are always playing on cement. And even in the house, they're wearing sandals. You know you, you know yourself. So in urban setups where people live in apartments, nowadays in our cities, it is chaotic. We have buildings so close to each other. Some of them are collapsing. But if you're lucky, the building will not collapse. Some, they are built so close to each other. And even airing clothes out to get well. You see those people who air their towels in the houses and all that because they don't have space to air these things. So there's no sun in these houses. These houses are so close to each other. There is no lighting in the, in the house. So all molds are growing there. Of course, that is bringing asthma. There's no sunlight there, therefore vitamin D deficiency. So these things that you're seeing, these cases that are rising for vitamin D deficiency and the asthmas, all of them are coming because of your houses. You want to settle in the urban setup, but it's becoming a setup for you. So you settle in the urban setup where the houses are so close to each other, your children never visit the, the villages. Look at children in the villages. They hardly suffer from asthma. Maybe one case or two. You will never see most of them suffering from this asthma because of what is actually going there. They have all the exposure to the sunlight. So vitamin D deficiency is a problem in the urban setups. Now also we are eating processed foods, the products, and they, are, they lie to you, they are, they are fortified with vitamin D, they have none. So stop eating products and eat uh, food. So somebody who has uh, asthma or a child who is suffering from asthma, wheat is a problem to them, seed oil is a serious problem to them, sugars are a problem to them, but those are the foods that actually grace your plates. Rice. Why are they in your place? And then there's no sun. So where are they going to get vitamin D? And then you're using seed oils instead of using saturated fats, the animal fats, the ghee. So where are you going to get the raw materials to make vitamin D from? Now you require supplementation. But by the time you realize asthma and vitamin D deficiency are actually related, it's too late. And then these children do not have any activity. They are always on phones. They are zombies. They are always playing on phones. They're in the house. Because they are asthmatic, they will never be allowed to play with pets. The carpets will be changed. Their towels and bedsheets will be changed. They will be washed every single day. And they will be washed with very serious anti uh, antiseptics. Now, every surface that they touch, the tables, the chairs, are sanitized with Dettol. And even the children are using antibacterial soaps. So these children do not have even exposure to allergens and pollens that will actually make sure that their immunity system is, is built up. Because through exposure to these things, the children will get better. So if you have a child who is asthmatic or has been diagnosed with asthma and you're actually holding them in the house with a jumper all the time, no light, no playing out, no playing with the pets, allow them to play with the pets because that will build the immune system. Do not sanitize their surfaces. Don't be a modern parent, okay? Let them play outside and as they play outside, let them play bare feet. Let them play on grass, let them interact with pets and dogs. Let them come back home, let them get the dirt, the soil and all that. Get those cabros off your home. Allow surfaces of playing. Okay? Good. So that is vitamin D deficiency. Number two, children who have been born to CS birth have always been known to have problems with their immune systems. They end up having this asthma. And you can see, the reason why you gave birth through a CS, that was an emergency. But nowadays, ladies are actually telling uh, their guy not to actually do these surgeries on them. You don't want pain. You don't want your organ to enlarge because you're thinking, oh, I'll be antaku amtaro. Not do that. You're actually messing up those children because they'll not receive the first layer of immunity that comes with the vaginal exposure of bacteria when they're being given birth naturally. So CS birth, you, because you're eating bad diets, you've gone big, now there are complications, now you have to get uh, through a CS. At least that one is understandable, but the one that you're actually just doing for fun so that you can actually shoot content, not do that. Number two, after the CS birth, because it's a sterile procedure, this child is living in a bubble. Now, this child will not have enough breast milk because, of course, of your bad diets. Now, you have to take the child to milk formulas. Another super inflammatory food. You give children pasteurized milk, you give children milk formulas and fortified foods that actually destroy their gut totally. And remember, their first immunity is coming from the gut. So when you destroy the gut, you cause them leaky guts. This is where autoimmune will actually be activated even further and the asthma will be exacerbated. So therefore, a child should never be given milk formulas unless it is a super case. Feed your children breast milk. Do not fear that your breast will suck. Okay? So do not do that. Do not give, uh, do not give children, uh, uh, not keep your children off the pets. Do not give your children, keep your children off the mud and dirt. 
Let the children play even in the rain. No problem. Let them play in the sunlight. Number four, number four, number three, number three is the diets. Fortified foods, processed foods, wheat, sugar, sweets, confectionery. All these things are getting margarine, foods that are rich in MSG, monosodium glutamate, that is inflammatory to their guts. So get your children off KFC. Cook for your children. Make foods that are organic and natural, whole foods for your children. Get them off wheat, get them off soda, get them off energy drinks, get them off that product called glucose. It's actually dextrose monohydrate, it's not glucose. Get them off that. Get them off cereals and milk formulas. Those diets mess up your children totally. And that is asthma. Number four, drugs. All the time you're giving children antibiotics. And you do this all the time. They have a common cold, you give them antibiotics. They have an infection, you give them antibiotics. All the time, over the counter. You're going to mess up their gut because antibiotics are messing up the immune system by destroying the good and the bad bacteria at all, uh, in general. So that will be a serious problem. Also, uh, the prednisolone syrup that you give your children because they have a flu. That's a steroid that is going to suppress the immune system. Remember, you are relying on the immune system to actually clear all the inflammation that is happening in your bronchioles. And again, uh, painkillers like ibuprofen uh, syrup that you give, the combination of brufen and paracetamol, the NSAIDs that you give those children all the time, they are messing them up. So therefore, if you're trying to protect your children from this, asthma, or if you want these children to actually recover from asthma because it's actually reversible, start focusing. One, feed them healthy foods. We've talked about that here all the time. Number two, allow them to play outside, allow them to interact with pets, allow them to play with that carpet, allow them to enjoy tables and dirt without having to sanitize everything. Number three, drop the milk formulas. Number four, eat healthy before you get pregnant and during pregnancy so that you don't deliver through a CS, which is a steroid procedure. Number five, allow them to play outside in the sun. Allow them to eat fatty meats. Allow them to eat egg yolks. Allow them to eat fish, chicken plus the skin. These are things that will give them cholesterol that will be used as an anti-inflammatory. It will be used to produce vitamin D, which is a potent anti-inflammatory. It's a potent anti-asthma medication. It's also a potent uh, a vasodilator. So you need no vasodilator, a bronchodilator. So you need that. Once the inflammation is gone, the bronchus dilate, the spasms disappear. So vitamin D plays that important role here. So feed them with food that are rich with vitamin D, allow them to play in the sun, and do not allow your children your children to grow fat because once they grow fat, they have a fatty liver. Now they com they, they have a compromised immune system because the liver produces immune cells, the liver also uh, activates the production of vitamin D. I thought you should know. So protect these children because you need them. And asthma is not inherited, it is acquired. So we can fix it through the diets. And as you use the drugs, use them temporarily as you fix the problem. Do not rely on drugs to fix the symptoms instead of relying on diets and lifestyle to fix the causes of those symptoms. I thought you should know.